Hey guys, Ryan Mickler here with Order of Man. I'm so glad that you're back here visiting with us today. I've got a great interview lined up with my friend Nathan over at Knife Gun Guy on YouTube. You can find him there. Today we're going to talk all about creating a bug out bag. You may also have referred to it as a get home bag. And the idea and the concept behind that is that for some reason you need to get the heck out of Dodge or you need to get back home in an emergency that you'll be prepared. And that's part of being a man is being adequately prepared for anything that may happen. So I would ask that you tune in today, learn all about what goes on when it comes to creating your very own bug out bag. Now we're so detailed and so precise into what goes into creating this bag that we've actually had to split it up into two parts. I don't want to overwhelm anybody with the information that we're sharing and I want to give you ample time to prepare and build your own bug out bag. So what I'd ask you to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel just below and that way you will not miss part two. Today is part one and we're going to be talking all about what goes on on the outside of the bag and some of the things that you may carry on the outside of the bag and then next week when we release part two we're going to talk all about what goes on on the inside of the bag. So again subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss part two which is going to be released next week but without further ado I'm going to introduce you to Nathan at Knife Gun Guy and we're going to talk all about how to create your very own bug out bag. about the concept of a get home bag and then we can get into what might be included in this bag. Okay, so main thing I would use this for is, well, if, you, if you're in a dangerous situation, like at your home or something like that, whether that be a natural disaster or economic collapse, any, any number of things it could be, um, you'd use this bag to get out of that dangerous situation and get to a safer location. Or, um, like a get home bag, you use this for the same thing. Um, a lot of people work a long ways away from where their home right. is, so their home may be their safe refuge and your family may be there by themselves. This bag may be able to get you from where you are to back home. Right. So that could be a number of miles, you know, 30 to 100 miles away. And so you need a bag to be able to sustain you over that distance. So it's hard to predict why you would need a bag like this. And so how do you create a bag that's versatile that'll work in any number of situations? Um, you just basically go off of basic survival needs, you know, as long as you have your basic survival needs covered in this bag, then you'll be pretty well rounded in most any situation. Okay, cool. So let's just get right into it. Um, just for the sake of time, what would you recommend, uh, that we look for in a, in a bag itself before we get into the contents of what's actually going to be in the bag? Okay. There's a couple of different things. Uh, a lot of people, We'll say that you don't want a bag that's too tactical looking, which this one kind of is. It has a lot of molly webbing and stuff like that. Right. And maybe you could go with a backpack type bag and blend into your surroundings a little bit better. I, I think five or ten years ago that may have been the case. But nowadays, a lot of the tactical stuff is becoming so popular that it's so out there now. Right. That it doesn't really catch people's eye like it used to ten years ago. Okay. So I, I'd worry about that less now than before. Right. Makes sense. Um, okay. You're going to want to... Get the bag afterwards. So get a lot of your gear and see what you're gonna need for a bag, and then buy the bag. Right. So a good backpacking bag it would or would be fine, but yeah, get the stuff first because you don't want to buy too big of a bag. Like I've got my backpacking bag is a, is a 70 liter Gregory. Right. I wouldn't want to use that. Right. Because if you huge. fill that up, it's gonna be 100 pounds. Right. So yeah, I've got a 65 liter um, bag as well. We're going on a hike this week, in fact, and so I know if I fill that up, there's no yeah. way I can carry it for any amount of time. Would you recommend that we look at a certain weight or a certain size? I try about, to keep it, I'd say as a general rule, I try to keep it below 30 or so pounds. Okay. I don't know where this is at. I brought the scale so that we can weigh it and kind of see. But I, I, I try to stay below 30 pounds, especially if you have a long ways to go. Right. Now, both of us are pretty physically fit guys. We're into fitness and stuff like that. That's another big concept is if you weigh 400 pounds, you're not going to be able to bug out. Exactly. Or get home. Probably. Exactly. Right. So, Make sure you're physically fit, and if you're not, then take the steps to get there. Okay, perfect. So where do we start? Uh, if we're gonna break down this bag, we're gonna get into it, and we've got, I know we've got some things laying around the table, but what do we look at, what do we start with? And okay, so to start off, I think, I think clothing and shoes and stuff like that, obviously are not gonna be things that are in your bag, but you throw these in your trunk of your car or have them set aside, Okay. because a lot of guys, um, I dress pretty much, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to dress in a situation where I could bug out of right, somewhere. Right, right. You don't have to wear a suit and tie or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Work. But if yeah. you but if you are a guy that has to wear a suit to work, that's not gonna work. Right. So have this in your trunk, and uh, and just some good like these here. Just an example of like some these are true spec pants. 
You have some pants that have nice good cargo pockets that are going to be comfortable to walk in. Um, a cheap option would be just the military surplus clothing. Right. And, uh, and I mean, obviously the military has been using that for years, so they've got it pretty much figured out. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So yeah. clothing, um, shoes, you don't want to do hiking in dress shoes. So a nice pair of hiking boots and a uh, good pair Virtual of wool socks. socks. Okay. For hiking. So Perfect. Easy. Clothing, have that in your trunk. Good idea. Okay, and then in the bag, as far as the bag goes, you're gonna have to build this bag kind of off of your geographic location or where you're realistically gonna be or have to go. Right. So there's some things in my bag that if I lived in a different place, I wouldn't have. And there may be some things in your bag when you go to build that that I wouldn't have right now. We live in southern Utah, it's pretty hot down here. Right, so you've so, got a, a hot, dry climate is what this bag is built for. Gotcha. Okay, okay, so uh -huh. we'll need to adapt depending on our environment. Okay, yes, sir. Yep. Um, so on this bag, I have chosen, we'll start on the outside and kind of work our way in. Okay. That works. So on the outside, I have a slingshot here, which is a good option for both defense and, um, and for the ammo carrying and stuff like that is lightweight. Right, right. And if you run out of ammo, you can pick ammo, pick ammo off the ground. So, so you have, are a great way to do go. you have uh, pellets or, or BBs in here? Is that I what you're shooting with? Okay, okay. Yep. So. Uh, slingshots on the outside, so that's a good item. As far as um, on the other side, I've got a, this knife is a buck hoodlum. It's a pretty long survival knife, is what it's designed for. It's a camp survival knife. And uh, I mean, the uses that a knife has is just unlimited. Right. Now, there's a lot of people that'll say, you know, instead of a large knife, go with an axe or a hatchet or something like that. Right. Which I have some options here for that as well. A tomahawk is a great option. Some people would even say just take the head of the tomahawk and you can construct a handle when you get there. Mm. But uh, make it keep your weight down. To keep the weight down. Would you recommend in, in addition to a knife like something like this, do you have any type of multi-tool? Yes, sir. As well? Okay, yeah. so we'll get into that. So there's a large knife, a uh, uh, small Axe would be great too, right, okay. depending on your environment. In, in like say Southern Utah down here, these items are not going to be as useful for us. Right. Okay. If we live somewhere that has 12 feet of snow, then these are going to be definitely in my bag. Right. Okay. So it depends sense. on your environment there. Okay. Um, you got I mentioned multi-tool. So in the side of my pouch right over here, I've got the Leatherman Super Tool 300. This is a great awesome. multi-tool that you can just throw in there. It's got saws, files, pliers, all that good stuff, and that's right in that bag. Perfect. Right there. So, I've got a couple of pouches on the belt here. Um, this is why I like these bags, these tactical bags, a lot because there's Molly. You can hook stuff all over them. And so many compartments. And then you you can buy these individual pouches separately. Is that right? Yes. And then you can. And they're not very expensive either. They're, right. they're pretty cheap. And like this knife, Molly, right onto the side of that, okay. which is you know. So you build it how you want it, basically. Mm -hmm. It's custom made. In other words. So in here, I have. Uh, in the front pocket right here, I've got a survival mirror. These are good for a lot of things, obviously signaling and all that kind of stuff. Sure. It would be good. Right. Um, the other thing you can do is check, your, you know, if you, if you say you cut yourself on your face, and you're like, oh, i got to take this care of this, you can use it as a mirror. Awesome. Take care of stuff like that. You can check yourself for ticks, all kinds of things. So that, that thing is super useful for a lot of different reasons. Okay. Um, up inside of here, I've got a compass with pacing beads on it. And... Um, all this stuff, if just putting it together is not going to be good enough. You're going to have to know how to use it. Right. There's a lot of videos, and maybe we can do some. Yeah, we'll need to do some more but, because uh, yeah, there is a lot to it. But so a compass and knowing how to use it, along with the compass, why I'm thinking about it, a map of your area or where you're trying to go with the compass. So have a map right there with the compass. And so that's what I've got in the front part of that pouch. Inside here, I have a handheld flashlight, I have a cigarette lighter, and uh, the Bic brand ones of those are the best. Just a cheap, just a cheap light. Yep, yep they'll okay. just work. Inside here, I've got some band-aids and that kind of thing for little well, scrapes and bumps and stuff, and then pills. Whatever medication you're on, say you have asthma, make sure you have your inhaler in here. Right. All that kind of stuff. Whatever pills that you need, have your pills in there. And then also have some type of pills for like allergy, like Benadryl and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Treat anaphylactic shot, right. stuff like that. Okay. If you know you're allergic to bees, have an EpiPen in here. Right. Okay. Stuff like that. Cool. So yeah, so that's where a little bit more of that custom custom stuff comes into play. Yes, sir. 
So I've got batteries here, extra batteries for this light and for another light I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, this thing right here, I've got a big repair needle in here. I've got some bank line here and then some Gorilla tape. So this is kind of my repair kit. If anything goes wrong with this bag or anything like that, I can fix it. I'll put that repair kit. Okay, so then on here I've got two, um, two schmogs. And these are great for, I mean, the, the lists that these are good for is unlimited. Really? The stuff that these are used for is amazing. Nice, yeah. So I put two of them on there. We'll have to um, put together a resource guide or something like that on what those can be used for. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you guys can see right now, but my head got really sunburned bad because I was just out all week camping, and I should have had one of these on. Put that over, right? So I've got two of those on there. On this other side, this little pouch over here, on the inside here, I have a flash drive that has all of my information on it. So copies of birth certificates, all that, anything. Really? Any type of Good idea. That's something have, I would never thought of. Put that on there because you may need that. Is this, uh, do you have this like password protected or anything or, or is it just It's on not. The, I probably okay. should. Yeah, I probably curious. should. Okay. And so then on here too, too, these Gorilla drives, that's the one I like for this because this is totally waterproof. Right. Okay. Yeah. So those heavy Gorilla duty. drives are sweet. Okay. They're heavy duty. I've also got cash in here. You want to have uh, 100 or maybe $200 okay. and in different size bill, 20s, 10s, 5s, 1s, stuff like that so you can make change. So cash is good. Perfect. Um, up inside here is kind of my little fire kit. And it is pretty little because uh, I feel like you just don't need a ton. And I've so seen some of your videos when, you, when you're making fires. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I'm good at hand drills and bow drills and all right. that kind of stuff. But in this type of a situation, I would not use that. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't <laughs> need to. I need to do, yeah. Right. So another big lighter in there. We can't have too many of those, I feel like. I've got some stormproof matches in this little bag. They're the waterproof type. Right. I've got a little striker for those. You don't want to forget that or you're not going to get them lit. Some cotton balls, some shavings, and some fat wood in there. And then um, I've got a fire steel right here that can be scraped with the back of this knife to get good sparks. Oh, right, okay. And then right here, I've got some, these are those little face cleaning Yeah, this wipes. is what I watch. I actually watched this in one of your videos. Yeah, some face cleaning wipes. You dip these in wax, and you take the knife, you scrape it up a little bit, strike that with your ferro rod, and this thing will burn for like 10 minutes. So you have a flame for if you, it's out in the cold, wet, yeah. rain. I've heard that fire. crayons will actually burn for a really, really long time. They will, too. Yeah. That's probably the mm -hmm. same thing with the wax on here. Yeah. Right? Okay. The wax holes, if you just burn that cotton ball, it's just going to go Right, right. Put the wax on, it makes it like a candle. Okay, cool. So that's what's in that one. And the other thing I have on the front of the back right here, we're going to talk about a little bit. This may not be necessary in your area at all. In my area, I feel that it is. Right. We've got um, a lot of cliffs, a lot of mountains. So we do. We that. also have um, huge rivers. Right. A lot of times they're in trickle. Right now, you can walk through any right. It's no big deal. But let's say there's an earthquake and some dikes break. Our rivers can very quickly become big yeah. rivers. Yeah, definitely. This is good for river crossings, cliffs. All that kind of stuff, which in my geographic area, I've got two big rivers to cross in order to get home and a few cliffs to navigate. And uh, so if you live in an area where you have those type of problems, have the rope and stuff in there to do that. Now, is there a certain weight that we want to look for in the rope or a certain uh, uh, thickness as well? Yeah, I would do anything from like eight millimeter static line up to about 9.5 millimeter static line. Okay, perfect. And uh, that'll keep the weight down. Oh, about 100 right. feet. Right. 100 feet's good. Okay. All right, guys, there you go. Again, we went through everything that you'd need to have on the outside of your bag. I hope that you gained a lot of valuable information from that. Uh, again, I would ask that you tune in and you subscribe to our YouTube channel because next week we're going to be releasing part two. And part two is all about the things that go on inside of the bag. There is so much more information that you need to be aware of when it comes to creating your very own bug out bag. We want to be very detailed. And again, I wanted to give you plenty of time to do some research, to check those things out, to begin working on your bag. So subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned till next week when we cover part two of the definitive guide to creating your very own bug out bag. I'll see you next week.